To look at elevation distributions, we often use something called the hypsometric curve. That is a plot of elevation on the vertical axis and the percent of the ground surface that exceeds that elevation on the horizontal over some area of interest, here shown for the contiguous US. Reading from the horizontal axis first, you can find that 80% of the US lies above 650 feet, or that 20% of the US lies above 4,800 feet. Or reading from the vertical axis first, you can find out how much area exceeds any elevation of interest. Using 8,000 feet, for example, you can find that that elevation is exceeded by a little less than 3% of the US surface area. You might note that there are many US mountain peaks exceeding 14,000 feet, such as Mount Rainier, Washington, Mount Elbert, Colorado, and Mount Whitney, California. This plot doesn't show such high elevations because of the relatively coarse digital elevation model used to create it. It was fine enough, however, to show this interesting low elevation kink, which is associated with Death Valley, California, where there is a relatively large valley bottom area falling well below sea level. A nice feature of the hypsometric curve is how it relates visually to the lay of the land, often showing overall steepening with increased concavity going from flat lowlands like coastal plains all the way up to very steep mountain uplands. In the US, that increasing curve concavity is interrupted a couple times by a straighter slope, indicating little steepening with elevation. That includes this interval, mostly comprised of the central lowland physiographic province, and this one that captures much of the high Great Plains, as well as intermontane basins, valleys, and lower plateaus. A common hypsometric curve in geography textbooks is this one, which shows how Earth has a bimodal elevation distribution, with one major level for most of the oceanic crust and another for most of the continental crust. Here is a very small-scale application of hypsometric curves, showing how benthic critters can influence estuary mud deposits. The axes are flipped the other way here, but it's still the same kind of plot. Old-school geomorphologists love relating hypsometric curves to uplift and erosion cycles, going from a youth stage to a mature stage to an old stage. And with all this talk of hypsometry here, I thought I'd also mention hypsometric tinting. That's just a fancy way of saying color by elevation. It creates a cool looking effect. It's sort of fallen out of favor with some cartographers because the coloring that's applied can be misleading. For example, dark green seems appropriate for lush coastal elevations in the east, but it's not a great color for showing Death Valley and other desert lowlands in the west. Please see video text for sources and methods. Thanks for watching.